guest today. John Gully will be showing us his slideshow from his trip to Norway, Finland, and Denmark. And we're going to have a question and answer session. If you have any questions, he'll pause it and answer any questions you may have about his trip. So if you'll try, I don't know. Will this microphone reach to him? Will it reach to him? Okay, can you come this way? Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, nice to see so many old friends. I mean, uh, longtime friends. Uh, and uh, get to visit and catch up a little bit. Uh, when school was out this year, I went to. Uh, I went to uh, Denmark and Sweden and Norway. I always want to say Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. I don't know why, but that's the reverse order. I started in Denmark. And uh, when I go, I usually take pictures, but I also take video. And uh, <clears throat> I decided I'd show you the video today. It's uh, 33 minutes long, I think, but um, if I stop and t explain something or, or make a comment, then it could be longer than that. Um, I, I don't know, uh, we may have to adjust the sound. One of the reasons I take video is that sometimes there's things that you you would like to hear. You know, what was it, what did it sound like? And so, uh, not a lot, but there are a few occasions where, where being able to recall the sound, what was going on with the sound, uh, it makes it uh, maybe more interesting. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoy it. I'll, I'll try to go through this. And, and show you. Uh, this is in Copenhagen. Um, which is where I started. Could you speak up just a little bit? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is in Copenhagen where I started. And um, when I go to a place I've never been before, uh, I like to take, the, 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 they have what they call hop on, hop off bus tours. And the, bu the bus goes through and goes by the major attractions in a city, and it gives you a chance to see what what there is in the city. And it also saved me a lot of walking, <laughs> which I was trying to avoid because I got a little knee problem going. And uh, so anyway, I, I always enjoy the architecture and uh, the way different people decide that they're going to plan a city. A, a big city is 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 a big city in a lot of ways. That's a big department store, um, which oddly enough, its name is, is in French. I don't know why that was. But anyway, um, this is a, a, a big square in the city. I don't know if uh, I may have to turn the sound up when we get to something that we want to hear. But uh, <clears throat> this is mainly just kind of touring around the city, seeing what it looks like. Uh, this, whoops, I skipped ahead. Okay, I had to back up a little bit. Maybe too much. Okay, this is Tivoli Gardens, which is um, maybe the most one of the most famous things in uh, Copenhagen. It's uh, it's kind of like Disneyland, but it, it had you can see there's a uh, there are rides. This is a ride that uh, I definitely decided not to go on, um, and there. It's sort of like Disneyland. It's got or an amusement park of some kind. It's got rides and uh, yeah, that's that's not for me. Um, they have, but it's also 
kind of like a shopping mall. There are a lot of things for adults, and, and so they were pretty smart to find different ways for people to spend their money. This is in Stockholm. People always ask me, well, what was a hotel like? So I always usually take a picture of the hotel. I got this through a touring, touring company, company, and so I didn't pick the hotel, but they, I think they picked real well. It was a really nice hotel. And one of the things that, that in every hotel, um, they don't have a top sheet. They have a bottom sheet, and they have kind of a comforting thing, like you saw right there. Here I am on the hop-on, hop-off bus tour again. This is in, in looking in Stockholm in Sweden. So, uh, Stockholm is built on 13 islands which I did not know. Um, and it's in a group of 30,000 islands uh, off the coast of Sweden. There's, there's like 30,000 islands. There's, Stockholm is built on 13 of them. And uh, this is, like I said, this is just the, on the hop-on, hop-off bus tour. Uh, I, I like the architecture and seeing how people build things in the places where people live, apartments, and uh, usually in, in a city like this, there are stores on the ground floor and then there are apartments all up above. <laughs> Some pretty modernistic looking buildings all around. I apologize for the glare from the window of the bus, but in this case, <laughs> you can kind of <laughs> see me as well as, as what it is we're looking at. Here's a bridge. Like I said, it's, it's built on some islands, so there's a lot of water involved when you're when you're going around in, in Stockholm. Um, I do not know why. Oops. I do not know why, but there there is a ship with an American flag, a, a sailing ship with an American flag in the harbor, and I never did find out what was going on. So it was a mystery to me. Lots of construction going on. What you notice, there aren't any skyscrapers. I don't know if there's a law that says you can't build a building. Some cities have to say you can't build a building over so so high or so many stories. But I, I didn't see any skyscrapers. Sometimes I forgot to turn the camera off. Here's a cruise ship that was in the harbor. And I forgot to turn the camera off again. <coughs> Anyway, it was a it was a nice city. Um, this, whoops. Everybody has different customs, and uh, I found out that there were there were trucks like this uh, all over town, and they they had just let out school, and so these are the kids that are graduating. And they're all standing up in the back of a truck, yelling, and and and, and, and I, I really don't understand it completely. But anyway, these are kids that have just got out of school. That's one of the things. Let me let me check the volume on the TV just a second. <laughs> that was the kids hollering. <laughs> I guess it's a, probably a good thing when they're all contained in the back of a truck and not running all over town. But so uh, you could say something positive about it. Anyway. Okay, maybe because we just talked and leave immediately. Otherwise, it's better to stay with us. Going back to Stockholm with this phone. And on the note, you're not allowed to smoke inside, outside, anywhere. Either 
He'll say what he's going to say in in uh, in Swedish, and then he'll say it in English. Uh, everybody in Sweden and in Norway studies English in school, and so there's not any problem communicating with anybody. Uh, there's all kinds of boats you can see. Uh, this is and this is just kind of a tour uh, going around some of the islands. Um, th this is not the obviously not the big downtown kind of place. This is on the way to Oslo in Norway. Um, the most well kept countries. Well, um, certainly among Switzerland is really that way too, but. Uh, Norway and Denmark and, and uh, Sweden are all, everything is as it should be. There's nothing that's run down that, that I ever saw. Um, and I just want, you, this is just give you an idea of what the countryside looks like uh, on the way between Sweden and Norway. Lots of pine trees. Hotel tour again when we get to Oslo. You see on the bed, you see that comforty thing? The, th the thing on the end is so you can lay down on the bed with your shoes on and you won't get your bed, the bed dirty. Uh, but that's what, that's, and it worked fine. Don't you? I didn't miss the top sheet. So. And that's a sculpture of I don't know what. Did you want this? Just let me know when you want the sound back on. Okay, thank you. There, there are not very many times, but there's a, another cruise ship. This is the Opera House in uh, Oslo. Did you go? Uh, no. Uh, timing was right, wasn't right. Uh, James, James Barrett's, uh, Bruce Barrett's son, James. His wife is, was born in Norway, and so I, I emailed James and asked him for some suggestions about places to go and things to see, and he sent me a whole list of things, and I, so I really appreciated that. Um, this is on the way, look at this barn. Everything is like it's supposed to be. Look at the houses and the yards. Everything is like it's supposed to be. It's it's really really uh, amazing to me that everything is so well kept. Um, yeah, music. Uh, sound, please. Oh, sound. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea what that band was there for. They were just playing a little concert They're in the middle of the park for people going by. This is the Royal Palace in uh, Oslo. And this is a fire that I took a picture of and I never did quite figure out what burned up, but it apparently was not good. Uh, after, uh, after Oslo, I got on the train and I'm going to I didn't know where I was <laughs> going. I was following the itinerary that the travel company gave me. And uh, so I'm, I'm on the train and this is what the countryside looks like now. And we're going to uh, a place called Vatnahalsen, which is, uh, as it turns out, the train stops and you get off and you walk up the hill and there's a hotel and that's it. There's, that's the only business that's there. You see how the the terrain is changing. You can see snow on on the mountains there, and the, the foliage is not as healthy looking as it, as it was before. And here there isn't any foliage. It's just rocks and snow. 
How cold was it? No, not never cold. Never cold. Sixties, seventies. Okay. See that little houses. Here it is, Vatna housing. This is my hotel room in Vatna housing. There's the view out the window. Um, bed exactly the same, uh, like it is in the others. Uh, oops. This is uh, this hotel. Uh, they did not. There were no phones in the room. There was no TV in the room. Uh, it was the quietest place I think I've ever been, and it was it was a real really nice break for you know tour tour tour. And then, but this was just like an old fashioned hotel, and I, I I enjoy being there. I have no idea why they have a swimming pool. Uh, there's snow in the mountains and a swimming pool. This is this is just one of many waterfalls in this part of the the country. Houses that are red and have white around the windows, that's pretty much the most typical. Uh, I don't know why red is such a popular color for houses, but it, it really was. But that's the view. And it's summer down on where we are with the green grass and everything, and there's snow on the mountain, and, and, and that never made very good sense to me. There's a really kind of almost delicate looking waterfall there. And there's, there's a not so delicate looking waterfall. I don't know what people in this part of the world do for a living or whether those are vacation houses or what. This is on the train again, moving the next day. The train is, is the steepest, one of the steepest railroads in, in the world as far as, as going up and down. Uh, this is a snow cover so that when in the winter time it snows so much that the tracks would be blocked if they didn't build this over the track. Uh, this is getting off to look at a waterfall. It's, and it's interesting because they, they built this platform. This is all there is. The train just stops and you get off on this platform and look at the waterfall and go ooh and ah and then you get back on and you can go on your way. Uh, but it was a pretty impressive waterfall. There are, I don't know, thousands of waterfalls. Here's another one. Um, and that they're all at the top of the mountain and there's a road that switches back and forth you can see there too but there are lots and lots of waterfalls and I don't know why water comes out of the top of mountains it's not snow melt oh it's not no it's not there's another one there's a, there's a couple more But it, there, it, it was really pretty. But you see those continuing more waterfalls as you go along. And the stream running down. a little community down there. Red houses, white trim. I don't know why, if red paint's cheaper. I wouldn't think it would be, but anyway. Lots of red houses. Uh, Sam. 
On the left hand side you can see the wall, which has a free fall of 140 meters. After Lincoln's activity in the Wasserfall, the Rwanda Fossil, with an affine fall. That part is probably the most you don't need to hear. But I, he just told how tall the waterfall was. It's 140 meters, and a meter's like a little over three feet. Oh. So 140 would be over, over 400 feet fall on the, on the. You can tell him it's good I don't teach math, but. <laughs> Anyway, it, it, that one is a pretty impressive waterfall. And when you can put your camera up to the window and see the front of the train in front of you, you're making a pretty sharp turn. But here's houses, all in perfect shape. There's a John Deere. And barns and houses and everything looks perfect. Are those apartments? I would guess maybe. Okay. Uh, now we're on a boat. One day I went boat bus. Uh, I went train. Uh, bus, boat, train. So this is the boat. The, this is not the train. This is on the boat. This is uh, going through the fjords. I I don't know. I don't know what would possess a family to build a farm on a slope that's like this. Uh, but you can see there are fields there. I guess. Whatever reason, they <laughs> decided that was a place that they needed to farm. And there are little towns all along. This is, what the boat I'm on is a ferry. And so it's stopping at all the little towns along, along the way. And this is um, one another of the many waterfalls. Another waterfall, and they're coming right from the top of the mountain. And I'm, I've never been in a place where waterfalls were common. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, this is really How cold was the water? I don't know. Was it really? I, I never dipped my toe into the water to find out, but. I should have asked somebody. I, I didn't think about that. I'm sure we could Google it. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> And there's a waterfall. Can you see right here? Some of the times I would be inside on, on the ferry, and some I would decide to take a picture of something, so I just had to do it through the window. And I'm sorry that I didn't get a better picture of some of them. There's a waterfall. And there's a bunch of waterfalls. And you see they're coming right from the top of the mountain. Red houses, white trim. <laughs> now we're on the bus.
Bergen, here's my hotel in Bergen, which was a little bit different, but it still had the same setup on the beds. It had these beams and a ceiling that, well, you can see. Uh, I went on a tour of the harbor in Bergen. Uh, the boat that I was on was named Eric Bloodaxe. B-L-O-O-D-A-X-E, Eric Bloodaxe. I have no idea who that was and why he deserved a boat named after him, but there you go. These are our, uh, these were warehouses because Bergen was a big port and they did a lot of trade. So these, these are houses now, but they were warehouses for different companies for storing things that they would ship in and out of, of, of the country. A big uh, trading port. Uh, where, I, what, where this started in Bergen uh, is um, there's a fish market there and they have restaurants and you can go and eat fresh fish, really fresh fish. Uh, and they also have, I, I, had, I don't think I took a picture of it on the, the video, but uh, they had signs that they had uh, moose, moose burgers and uh, reindeer burgers and quail burgers. Did you eat any of them? I had the fish. <laughs> and just a note, Eric Bloodex was king of Northumbria. Well, of course he was. <laughs> Real name was Haroldson. <laughs> I learned something today. Thank you. I, I'm glad to know that. <laughs> here, <laughs> here, here's one of the churches, the really old churches. Um, I don't think I don't know if they're in the video or not, but there were people. Every available space uh, in front of those apartment, those houses. There's a helicopter that's about to take off. Every available space in front of those houses. There were people laying out in the sun because, in the winter time, you know they don't have any sun to speak of. And it never got completely dark at night, the whole time. I mean, you could wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and it would be like dusk, maybe. Because it was so far north. You can see some people there uh, in front. This is, uh, I thought this was interesting. This is a grain elevator. And it was built in the 1700s. And, it's, and, but you, and they haven't changed that much, have they? I thought that was interesting. Well, London hotel time. <laughs> London, we don't have a, the, the comforter set up. We got a more traditional set up for the, for the bed. And it was a smaller room. Hotels are really expensive in London, but uh, this one turned out to be pretty nice because it had a great air conditioner and it was needed. <laughs> Even if it was small, it, it was comfortable. Okay, we can turn the sound on again. Okay, this is the King's Birthday Parade in London. favorite thing. This is a mounted band. Imagine keeping horses in line, in formation, and playing a musical instrument as you go down the street. <laughs>
this is the key, I think. Uh, I had been to the Queen's birthday parade where Queen Elizabeth is in a, was riding in a carriage, an open carriage, and she was wearing a hat, and you could see her face, and she was waving. Well, the king is wearing a bearskin hat that comes to right here, and he's got a chin strap made out of metal that goes like this. So I'm assuming this is the king because he's riding by himself, and he's the only one that did that. And the reaction of the crowd. The one in the Commodore hat, that's uh, Princess Anne. I know who she is because she always wears that kind of hat. And I don't think anybody else does. Uh, that's uh, Prince William's Kate. kids and Princess Kate. Uh, she's in green and the kids are on the, on, on, the kids are over here on this side. I'll, I'll start it up again. All of the all of these on the parade, they all march down the street from Buckingham Palace to a place called uh, Horse Guards Parade. And they have a ceremony there. And this is actually not called the King's Birthday Parade. It's called the Trooping of the Color. And it's where uh, every uh, every soldier knows, well, like on the battlefield, where their troops are because of their flag. And so this is recognizing who has what flag and so that sort of thing. Anyway, they march, go down the street to Horse Guards Parade and then the street key, key, uh, cleaner comes and cleans the, <laughs> cleans the street after all those horses. Um, and then they, they come all the way back. Um, and this is all the way back. This is the, oh. this is the artillery. These horses are pulling cannons. Here's the mounted band again on its way back. I couldn't resist the Ottoman one. I, I just love to watch them. Lots of really beautiful horses.
the whole time my camera to take pictures and everybody else in the crowd was the same thing. So I'm trying to get it where you can see what's going on. There's the kids again and, and Princess Kate. Okay, this is this is at the balcony in Buckingham Palace, and I was trying to get a picture of uh, the king and the royal family when they came out on the balcony. But I had to zoom in so much, and the crowd was so heavy, and I had been walking indoors standing for five hours, and I, I, I so there's not much of this. There's just a little look, and the king hasn't even come out yet. But anyway. And it was too shaky when I'm having to zoom that much, so I just gave up on it. And took a picture of the geese instead. This was a really pretty place. There was a bench in the shade of a tree, and that was the view sitting on the bench. And so I enjoyed that almost as much as the parade. They, they love to play in the water. Well, they always end the, the birthday parade with a flyover of different units from the, the Royal Air Force. Yes. This is CR, and that's, that means Charles Rex. Rex means king in Latin, so that's what CR stands for. And these are called the Red Arrows, and they're the, the, the grand finale. Uh, my last day uh, in London, I went to the British Museum. Uh, with, I've been before, but I, I would go again tomorrow if I had a chance. It's, it's really uh, the best museum I think I've ever been to. This is all of Egypt, the Egypt room, I guess you could say. Uh, these are uh, well, they're bathtubs, <laughs> except when you died, in which case it was your coffin. They buried you in your bathtub. So, and, and it, it was just the right size, so. I thought that was pretty practical. That's a, and uh, some of this I'm showing you, I don't know what they are. This is prehistoric chickens. Or uh, something, not prehistoric, but ancient chickens. The, the British, I don't know, remember where it's from. This is a Greek temple. They took it apart stone by stone and marked each stone where it went and brought it all back to London and reassembled it inside the British Museum. And that's it. Anyway, uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I could try to answer if you have some questions about any of that, but uh, just to say that I'm, I'm thankful that I had an opportunity to go. To go. So. What was your favorite part of the whole? I think it, the the 
crews up in the fjords going through it, all of that. I think that was really impressive, really impressive. In the pictures at the beginning, the water was so blue, was it really that way? Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, if, if anything, it was, the pictures don't do it justice. <laughs> You still walk a mile in ten minutes. The kids always said you could walk a mile in ten minutes. Can you still do that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, did I, you say your next trip is going to be knee replacement? I, I'm thinking probably. Yeah. I'm going to see the doctor August the second. We'll find out. You'll be ready for summer. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be ready. <laughs> I begged Mr. Gully for 10 years. Please go to Ireland for me because I'll never get to go. And he blames me for COVID because the year he planned to go to Ireland, COVID hit. He, had, he didn't get to go, but he went the next year. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> very good, John. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You're welcome.